Howdy folks, Doc here with LastPass Tool. And this is a Fluke screwdriver. It's a number two Phillips. It's got the 1000 volt insulated rating. Um, it seems like a solid design and I actually really like it. And let me show you why. Um, I also still don't have closure on my Fluke pliers if that is a bug or a feature on the front end. So I'm moving on to something that I think I understand. I think I got this, a screwdriver. Um, anyway, Here's a set of uh, different kinds of Phillips screwdrivers. And a lot of the times I'm using a screwdriver, an actual hand screwdriver instead of a drill, is when there isn't a ton of resistance. You know, I'm not driving them into uh, building a fence or a deck or, you know, setting an electrical box into a wall or something. But this particular um, amount of resistance is pretty common, not a lot. That's when I often use a hand screwdriver. And one of the things that happens when you're, you know, zipping along fast with a hand screwdriver is you can fly out. And um, it's not always camming out. It's often just the orientation of your hand changes the angle and it slides out. And that's one of the reasons we use Phillips in the first place is to avoid the screwdriver slipping around. Um, that's why we left the, you know, the slotted arena. Don't use those as much because they easily slide back and forth. So we got Phillips, and Phillips was, of course, invented by a guy named Thompson, who sold it to a guy named Phillips. Um, and as far as that camming out goes, there's some belief that that actually is a deliberate kind of built-in torque mechanism. So if you're using these in metal, especially aluminum, that you can't get them so tight that you you know, damage the thing you're working on, that the screwdriver will slip. I don't know, is that a bug or a feature? Um, but anyway, so I was doing some kind of my own testing on these different screwdrivers. I was interested in, you know, how they felt in my wrist and hand and, and when I started to fatigue with them. Um, but I noticed something else, and these two score way high. And that's why I, I really like this fluke. But what it taught me was this Knipex here has has a feature, a, a design issue, that caught me off guard. And that was when I was doing a bunch of this and I would slip out. And it happened often and I was thinking, okay, why is that going on? But it's not going on with this. You know, this one's just staying in and I can go as fast as I want. But when I was doing it with the Knipex, it slips out. And it, wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with the tip. That's where I, I started. It actually has to do with the material in the handle. This is a really slippery material here, surrounded by this little bit more grippier, uh, kind of softer material. But there are these spots of this hard material in this multi-component hand. And if your fingers hit those, they slide. Especially um, when I start speeding up and I drop to the back of the screwdriver, See right there, I hit it and it flies right out because my thumb flies off. It doesn't stay on that. The Vera it didn't do it as much um, because there are kind of continuous grippy texture points throughout this screwdriver. There are some gaps where it turns hard, but those generally are not that large. So I can hold that one in. Snap-on, again, similar to the Knipex, these are really slippery parts right here with a little bit more grippier rubber here. Now, that um, is also has to do with the shape. So there's a good chance I will seat, uh, once I get going, I will seat on something. My thumb will slide up and then encounter that rubbery material here um, and be able to hold it still. But the Knipex I found was the worst. That once I started going uh, faster with it and I hit one of those spots, I would just flip the screwdriver right out of the fastener. It didn't happen uh, with the fit with the fluke at all. And even you know as I'm moving around, this harder spot back here actually is a nice little kind of palm seat. Um, but I have full traction all the way around. So as long as my alignment stays about right, um, I can just zip this thing back and forth. You know at high speed. Same with the PB Swiss. Hard back here. This is slides around in your palm, which is great. So as even as I go up and down, you know, it's easy to keep that alignment. You know, as I'm zipping the screwdriver back and forth, moving my hand around on it, but as soon as I got to the Knipex and started going, you know, that just, it's, I actually felt it start to pop out. And I'm not trying to do that. Um, it just happens. 
that one I caught it and spun it right out. Try it yourself and see. Play with some of your screwdrivers. Um, also, I noticed on the fluke, it does hold an 18 millimeter wrench here, so you could get a little bit extra leverage, assuming you don't need that um, electrical insulation, but that is on some plastic there. Um, and it's got a pretty substantial hole, so you could make that a T-handle, I assume. I, um, that, that that would work if you needed some additional leverage. Knipex has one, um, but stuff doesn't fit through it unless you get, you know, little tiny, I mean, not even that little narrow PB Swiss. And then you start to wonder, is the thing you stuck through there going to hold up? But Fluke, they give you a nice big opening. You probably get a number three screwdriver through there. Um, Vera uses a number 10 for additional assistance there. And Snap-on is still stuck in the 3 8 world. Um, I'd like to see them jump up to 10. But this 18 is, is pretty crazy. I don't know, or optimistic, if that's what they think. But anyway, that Fluke screwdriver right here, uh, I really like it. Um, not terribly expensive. Um, there's a link below, but overall, um, th these two, I mean, it just immediately showed me, um, you know, a real advantage here. And with that, Doc out.